this video today is to answer a question from a viewer. And I don't know why I've never thought about answering your questions on video before, but I haven't, duh. So here we go, let's give it a try. Here's her question. Hello, Carla. Brand new beginner here, and I've started with this kit. She's referring to the kit on Santa's sleigh. Since I, and back to her comment, since I have no needlework experience, I have a random question for you on prepping the needles for different techniques. Sometimes I see the floss is pulled all the way through the needle eye, making the strand doubled and knotted at the end of the two pieces. But other times the floss is only pulled partially through the needle, left loose on one end and knotted on the other end separately. She is so very observant. <laughs> How do I know when to do one technique with the thread versus the other? I don't want to run out of floss. Thank you. Oh, I see my assistant is here to help us answer this question. Okay, to begin answering this question, we need to first look at our needles. And each kit comes with two needles, a bead needle and an embroidery needle. And uh, recently I've noticed the kits do not label these needles. So how do you know which is which? Well, let me help you figure that out. We'll bring in a straight edge here to help us do that. And we'll level out those needles. Oh, that edge doesn't work use this one. Looks like they're pretty straight here now. There we go. Now the first indication that you're going to look for is the longer needle. Oh look at the help I get. The longer needle that is one indication that it might be the bead needle. The next thing you're going to look at is the width of the needle or the thickness of the needle. You can see that this needle is really quite thin and this needle, especially if you feel it like I'm doing, um, is much thicker. So the thinner needle is usually your bead needle. The next thing you can look at is the eye of the needle and you can see the two eyes of these needles. The eye of this needle on the left is much bigger and uh, open much more and the eye of the needle on the right here is tiny and uh, really really narrow. So that tells you this is the bead needle. You need that very narrow eye to get through the sequin and the bead. Um, and so that's going to tell you what you're going to do with um, the floss based on what needle you need to do the work you're doing. All right, your information for uh, the number of strands of floss that you need to be working with is on this page of your instructions. For me, it's page two, but you'll need to look for a uh, kind of a graph or a chart that looks like this. So the first thing that you are probably going to do with your um, kit is applique. And applique means to cut out the pieces of felt and to sew them down onto the, like has been done here, onto the main piece of the stocking. So that stitching is done and you can see here with one single strand. When you thread up for that single strand you're going to thread an embroidery needle and you can see I keep my um, uh, floss sorter labeled so that I can easily grab whatever needle. I don't have to try to discern what kind of a needle it is. But so I'm going to thread up an embroidery needle like this one. Actually this is a bead needle so let's rephrase that. Here it is. Here's an embroidery needle. And I'm going to pull one strand of floss and you can see here that um, each kind of rope of floss, we'll call it, can be separated into six different strands here. This kind of floss can, like that. And so you're going to pull off a single strand and thread it through this embroidery needle. Then, because I am stitching for, um, for applique, 
I want a single strand. So I'm going to pull my floss through the needle. I keep grabbing the wrong one. I'm going to get the right one here pretty soon. This is the right one. And you can see here that I have pulled it through, but I have not brought the two ends together to meet. And I have knotted the single end. And this is called a single strand of floss, okay? And that is what you're going to use when it's time to come stitching these white pieces down. And you can see, uh, if you look real close, see how I've stitched it down here, right around here. I do like to hide my stitches underneath sequins whenever you can. But you can see it in the brown here real easily. And that's the applique, and it's always done with a single uh, strand of floss and with an embroidery needle. So sometimes you are going to be using it to um, put on your sequins and your beads. And so then sequins and beads are always done with a double strand of floss. And my helper here is uh, really enjoying this particular video here. So here I have threaded, this is a, a bead needle. I have threaded it with a single strand of floss and I've pulled the ends of that single strand together so that they're together and done a knot. So I have in essence a double strand of floss. There are two strands and whenever you are sewing sequins and beads you always want that double strand. Okay, So single strand always for applique and double strand always for um, sequins and beads. Now what about all the other stuff? Well, let me help you by looking at this chart. And here in this row, it tells us the strands. And this is the stitch. So for example, in this satin stitch, we are always going to use two strands. And I still use the same technique for two strands as I do for um, sequins and beads. I am going to pull off one strand of floss for that color, whatever that color is, and I'm going to pull the two ends together at the end and knot them together so I have a double strand. But then you say, Carla, what about this? It asks for three or for four. Well, then I separate that cord of floss into either three strands or four strands, whatever it's asking for, and then I'm going to thread that through an embroidery needle with those numbers of strands and then do that appropriate stitch. In this case it's an outline stitch or here it's a just a straight stitch. Um, in that case, or I'm sorry, they call this a running stitch. So in those cases I, I thread up a special needle just for that. When I'm finished, then I usually unthread that needle and put it back where it belongs, um, just so I don't get confused and grab it by accident. Um, so that's pretty much the the um, the the technique. That's how you know. Is this guide is truly going to tell you what you need to know? Now, I have had a kit or two very rarely, that I've run out of floss. It is very rare. But should you run out of floss, these flosses and the colors are DMC floss. You can go to any fabric store or hobby store and you can take the color number of the floss that you ran out of, whatever that number is. For instance, here's burgundy. 
It's going to be DMC number 815. You can go to, like I said, any fabric store, any hobby store, and you can go into the uh, embroidery floss section, look for DMC floss number 815, and you're going to buy a skein of floss, and it'll cost you about 59 cents. That's what I've been paying lately. Um, so not a big deal. It doesn't add much to the price of what you've spent for your kit, but you can solve that problem should you run into it. It's not a big deal. So let's just review really quickly and say that we know several things. Applique is always with a single strand knotted at the end of a single strand and the other end loose so you can slide through the needle and um, use up the as you use up the thread. Sequins and beads are always done with a bead needle and they are with one strand pulled the two ends together and knotted together so that they become a double strand of floss and that's how you sew all your sequins and beads. All the embroidery stitches, you use your chart as indicated, and you use two strands, three strands, whatever is indicated. I always, when it's two strands called for, use a single strand through the needle and bring it down the ends together and knot them and use then that as a double strand. So I hope that helped. And oh, let me just let you in on a little item that I have recently found. Um, when I was young, I remember my mother having a um, thread conditioner and all of a sudden it occurred to me recently that I had not seen that. I was actually cleaning out her house. And um, so I went to the hobby store looking for a thread conditioner. And this thread magic, I'll put a link in the description below, is just a case with some uh, clear wax in it uncolored wax and when you're ready to use a piece of floss or when you get it out and separate it for the first time and you're getting ready to use it uh, before I thread the needle I usually do this you're just going to take that that strand of floss and lay it across the top of the wax and pull it through I hold it down with my thumb and I pull it through all the way to the end. Now I'm not going to do this one. This one has been done already, but you can do it two or three times depending on what condition your thread is in. Um, my thread tends to be very dry being here in the desert and um, to dry out easily. And depending on the age of the kit, and you really don't know the age of the kit when you buy it, um, you don't know how long it's been put together or sitting on a shelf or if it's gotten warm like for me my stuff gets warm just sitting in the mailbox and it doesn't get warm it gets hot <laughs> but yay for you know the southwest so anyway this thread conditioner is so very very helpful and it really does help to keep your thread from knotting as much and it does help it to slide through your work very smoothly and not have any places where it pulls or drags. So I highly, highly recommend that. And who doesn't want to skip spending time getting knots out of their thread? I don't know about you, but I'll skip that any day. So that's that's my one tip and trick for this video. I hope this answered your question and helped you to understand. And we will be back um, please, 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 if you have questions that I have not answered, leave them in the comments and we'll get a video for each question and try to help everybody have the best finished product they can possibly have. God bless your day.